Um, let me get this set up. Whoa. <laughs> Not a collection. What's the last book called? Blah, blah, blah. Oh, I can't even think of his name. Blah, 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 blah. Oh my goodness, is that how long I've been talking? Yay, this will be so fun to edit. Hey fellow fiction fanatics, I'm Chase. Welcome back to my channel. So this video I've been wanting to do for quite some time. I was hoping to get it out in January, but that's just not how things worked out, but better late than never. Because today I'm going to be ranking all the books that I read in 2021. So before we hop over to my tier list, I'm just gonna go over the categories for you. The first category we have is Loved It. So these are books that I just absolutely loved and are probably a new favorite for me. The second category I have is Liked It. So a book that I really enjoyed, but just wasn't a favorite for me. The third category we have is Just Okay. These books were fine, but they just didn't stand out to me. They're not good, not bad, just okay. The next two categories I have are Disappointing and Ugh, which are books that are just plain bad, in my opinion. The difference between these two categories, UGG includes books that I did not like at all, I kind of regret reading them. Whereas Disappointing is just books that didn't live up to what I was expecting. And then at the bottom we have a category that's all its own and that is nonfiction. It being at the bottom doesn't mean they're bad, it means I don't actually give a ranking to them. So these books I'm rating, these books I'm just putting in nonfiction and I'll th then put them in the order that I like them best. These ones are their own category entirely. All right, let's get into it. So the first book we have here is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I really loved this book. I thought it was great and I can't wait to continue on with this series. I was not expecting to like it as much as I did, but I'm so glad I read this one. Next we have A Quiet Kind of Thunder. Uh, this one was disappointing. I was really sad because this has a girl who's mute and a boy who's deaf and it's their relationship together. I really thought I'd like it and I liked a vast majority of this book, but I just didn't end up loving it. I don't know, maybe it's just okay. It's both, but I'm just gonna put it in just okay actually because it was good for a vast majority, but then the latter half I didn't love. First half, just okay. Last half, disappointing. So, A Vow So Bold and Deadly. I liked it, it was good. The first book in this series is definitely the strongest and I would definitely recommend picking that one up. If you don't wanna continue on, you don't have to necessarily, but I did enjoy the last book. Next we have And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. I loved this one. I was not expecting to and I really, really enjoyed that. Ash, disappointing. It was supposed to be a dark Cinderella retelling with LGBTQ plus representation. The dark element wasn't really there, I felt like. If you're gonna give me a dark fairy, then you need to give me a dark fairy. And I wanted there to be more of a love triangle between the prince, the huntress, and the dark fairy. I wanted to have a dynamic of who she should choose. Instead, out of the three, you knew exactly who she was gonna choose. One was the love interest, one was just there, and one was supposed to be part of a love triangle, but there was no romance at all. So if there had been more of a love triangle, I would have liked that one more. Becoming by Michelle Obama is in our nonfiction area. And then Between the Lines, I'm gonna go with Just Okay. The first one was still good, but the second one was so much better. Bingo Love, oh, that one was disappointing. I really, really was looking forward to this one because I love Bingo and I thought this was gonna be a great LGBTQ plus love story. It just didn't live up to my expectations and I'm really disappointed that it didn't. Bookish in the Beast, he was just okay. Geekerella was definitely the strongest of the three. I didn't like the second one, mainly because one of the characters was just so unlikable and unrelatable, and I just couldn't connect with them, and they were literally half the story, so I did love that one, and then, I don't know, I just didn't love this one as much as I was hoping to. Born a Crime is going in our nonfiction area. Cinderella is dead, I'm gonna put in liked it. Cinder, loved it. I did a reread with my sister of the Lunar Chronicles and we absolutely loved them. This is one of my favorite series and I'm so happy that she liked them as much as I do. Clap When You Land, loved it. Concrete Rose, um, I really did enjoy this one, but I'm gonna put it in liked it. It would go in loved it if we had more of how Star's father went to jail. If we'd had that last bit told to us, I would have put this in loved it, but it's very close. It's on the borderline. Just barely didn't make it. Press is my 
favorite of the Lunar Chronicles. Winter's up there too, but Crest is my favorite because I love Thorn and Crest. They're fantastic. Daughter of Smoke and Bone. Oh my gosh, did I love this book and I need to know what happens next. Love these new covers and I'm really hoping that I get these. Dealing with Dragons. I really like this one. I just picked it up on a whim. It's such a great little middle grade. I'm excited to read more of this series. Dear Justice. Oh my gosh, did I love this one. I talk about it non-stop because it is so good. El Defo. Just okay. I'm sad that these two are in Just Okay because they have deaf representation. This one is going in Just Okay because I think I just had my expectations too high. I guess I need to stop doing that when it comes to these stories. I just didn't love that all her friendships sort of just slipped through her fingers and I was expecting more of the hero aspect, like seeing herself as the superhero who could do all these things. But I guess I was just expecting more from it. All right, and a burning loved it and fairest ugh this was a reread for me and i originally thought fairest was essential to the story because you found out all these things and you got to see everything that happened prior to cinder learn more about lavana it's not a bad story it's just that you're in lavana's head the entire time she's just horrendous it just wasn't a good experience because of that and i realized the stuff i remembered really liking about fairest was actually in stars above which is the second short story collection for the lunar chronicles so i will happily be reading that with my sister hopefully sometime this year my opinion of Ferris definitely changed and you don't need to read this one. It's not pleasant. Fangs was just okay. Some parts I liked in this and some parts I didn't, but just because it was so short and wasn't exactly what I was hoping for. So that's why I'm putting it in just okay. Graveyard Shakes, that's gonna go in disappointing for me. I was expecting this to have kids meet a ghost story, sort of like Casper or something like that. Instead, it was just really dark and creepy and I didn't see a moral or anything in this story. It wasn't for me. I didn't like it. So that's why it's gonna go in disappointing. Hollow Pox, I loved it. I cannot wait for Silverborn, which is the fourth book in this series. I have loved the Morgan Crow series or the Nevermore series. I'm never sure which one you're supposed to call it. I've really enjoyed these books so far. This one was so good and I can't wait to continue on with this series and continue to add them to my collection. Honey Girl, this one was disappointing for me. I like this book for the first half. And then I felt like the writer had all these other plot points they were trying to fit in because they forgot about them. I thought it had already wrapped up and then suddenly we had all these other things and I just didn't get it and I was really disappointed by it. If you liked it, I'm really happy for you, but I'm really sad that I didn't. Love in Pajamas, I absolutely love this author. She is fantastic. They're just these comics about their relationship and it just reminds me so much of my husband and I. They are so funny and so cute. I just think it's adorable. So I love that one. For just Ella, I'm gonna put that in Liked It. I really did like this book. So far I read the first two. I'm excited to read the last book in this trilogy and see how everything comes together. I'm curious if we're gonna follow new characters like we did in the second book or if everything's gonna come together. I'm looking forward to see what happens next. Legendborn, I loved it. It was so good. This was definitely my top read of the year. I loved everything about this. It was so cool. The next book comes out this year and I'm so excited. It's gonna be so good. At least I'm hoping so. And I can't wait to read more of this story. These next two are the Magic Treehouse series. I read the entire Magic Treehouse series last year as my throwback Thursday challenge, but I've split them up into the Magic Tree House and the Merlin Missions. So the Magic Tree House, I'm gonna put in Liked It because these are definitely geared towards young readers and I think they are great for that age. These are such fun stories that just really make you wanna read and go along with their adventure. But I really, really loved the Merlin Missions. I don't think I read most of these as a kid. I definitely read the Magic Treehouse series, but I don't think I got as far into the Merlin missions. I really enjoyed these. These were such fun stories and they included historical figures and just all this magic and fun. And I still enjoyed these as an adult. So that's why I have these two in these categories. My Life Next Door, just okay. It was fine. It was pretty much exactly what I expected, so 
it was just okay. One to watch. This one was disappointing. I was really expecting to like this one and I didn't. I don't even really remember why, so it's definitely going in disappointing. Opposite of always, I hate to say this, but it's going in disappointing. So I thought it was gonna be a five star read for 90% of the book. I loved it. And then there was that singular chapter that took me out of the story. It totally threw me off, just made this book fall into disappointing for me. And I can't exactly explain why. So if it hadn't had that chapter, it would have probably been a five star read for me. I would have gone in loved it, but I just can't because of that. I'm really disappointed that it's in disappointing, but that's just how things are. Oh, other world, ugh. I did not like this book. It was pitched as this video game that's you just sucked in, you literally can't stop playing it. So it was giving me By Kids 3 vibes. And instead we just got this vulgar video game, this kid who can go in and out of the game whenever he wants pretty much. And he's trying to figure things out and save this girl. But he just was not for me. I did not like this book and I was really hoping I would. So it's gonna go in UGG, which is a big thumbs down for me. Yeah, I did not like this one. Palace of Mirrors, this is the second book in the Just Ella trilogy. I'm gonna put this one in Liked It as well. I have liked both these books and I'm excited to see what happens next. Next we have Pillow of the Woods and I loved this one. This was such a sweet story. It just made my heart happy. I love this graphic novel and I'm so happy that I now own it. So this is Playing With Fire, which is the second book in the Skullduggery series. And I'm gonna put this in Liked It. Pumpkin Heads, loved it. I read this every year. This is just the perfect fall story. Oh, Remote Control, ugh, did not like it. It made no sense. It looked so good and I actually read the first chapter before picking it up, but then the first chapter has nothing to do with the rest of the book and it was very, very disappointing. Did not like it. River Secrets, loved it. I thought it was so good and it definitely exceeded my expectations because when I was younger, this was my least favorite book of the series. So I don't know why I completely did a 180 and changed my mind, but now I really love this book. Next we have Ruby Before the Dawn. I'm gonna put this in Liked It. I thought it was good and I'm continuing on with this series, but it just wasn't an ultimate favorite. But I have enjoyed this series so far. Scarlet, I'm actually gonna put Scarlet in Liked It because I did enjoy this story, but I think out of the four books in the Lunar Chronicles, it's probably my least favorite. It's still good, but I just like the other ones more. This is the first book in the Skullduggery Pleasant series. I'm gonna put it in Liked It as well. I've enjoyed this series and I'm gonna continue on with it and I'm excited to see how the adventure continues. Slay, uh, I'm gonna put in just okay. I liked it, but it just wasn't a favorite for me. I thought it was just okay. Stamped is another nonfiction. Then we have Such a Fun Age. I did not like this one at all. The pitch for this was that this black girl gets accused of kidnapping this white child that she's babysitting when she's at a grocery store late at night. And I thought that was gonna be like a major thing that we're gonna address and talk about throughout the book. And it was sort of brushed over. I didn't really like any of these characters. They were all just awful people. The main girl was fine. I liked her and the little girl. And that was it. No one else was likable whatsoever. I just didn't like it. It wasn't very good, in my opinion. If you liked it, great for you, but I just didn't. The Adventure Zone, I liked it. I will be continuing on to see what happens next, but I just didn't love it. The Bookshop on the Corner, no. That was, no. And I was really, really hoping to like this because it's got this bookish main character. She's trying to start her own bookstore, and then there's a romance, but the romance is stupid. Yeah. Didn't like that one. The Chosen, disappointing. I don't know, it wasn't for me. The Goose Girl, loved it. This is one of my favorite series. Although I was surprised at how long it actually takes to get into the story because there's a lot of traveling involved in the beginning, but I still really enjoyed my reread of this book. Next we have the Happy Ever After playlist. I loved this book. I was not expecting to like this as much as I did and I loved it. It was so good and that epilogue was just perfection. Loved it. 
loved it. I highly, highly recommend this book because it was such a cute romance and I loved these characters and Tucker the dog. He's so integral to the story and I just loved everything about this book. The House in the Cerulean Sea. I loved these characters. They have my heart. I just want to go visit them because they are adorable. Next we have The Miracle on Ebenezer Street. I'm going to put this in Liked It. I thought this was really fun. I thought this was a fantastic middle grade, perfect for Christmas time. Next we have The Tower of Nero. I loved this one. I love these characters so much and I loved The Trials of Apollo. I just thought it wrapped up so nicely and I really, really loved this series. So it's definitely going in loved it. The Way You Make Me Feel, I liked this one. It was just a cute story that I enjoyed. There's something about Sweetie, loved it. It was so good, loved this romance. Five stars. Winter, another one that I absolutely loved. This is the finale to the Lunar Chronicles and it has a lot going on, but boy is it good. And I loved seeing all the references that I hadn't caught before. I love these characters and this is a fantastic way to end the series. I absolutely loved it. And last but certainly not least, we have Yesterday is History which I loved. This one was so cool. I loved the story. I loved the romance. I thought it was great. I'm gonna scroll up here so you can see it all. So now I'm gonna go down here and rank my nonfiction. So I absolutely loved Born a Crime. That one was my favorite that I read. And I think that's my order now. So I listened to all three of these as audiobooks. This one, so we're learning all these things throughout history and it's like a timeline and it was really well put together. And then these two are telling their own story and they actually are narrated by themselves. So that's why I like these a little more. But all of them are really good and I would highly recommend. So those are all the books that I was able to read in 2021. I'd love to know how you would rank these books and if you've read any of these, I'd love to know your thoughts on them. So let me know down in the comments. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to share the love. I'll see you next time. Bye.